Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Trilby's Notes. When we last left off, we were actually about to go down to the basement to figure out how we can possibly end this madness. Also, we gave our pills to Siobhan, so maybe Siobhan will be smart and take them and get out of this hellish nightmare. Or else she might witness the evilness that is Uva Bowl. No, I'm kidding. If he was actually in here, that'd be freaking amazing. So yeah, we're basically uh, making our way downstairs following these bloody footsteps to a teeth. Yeah, there really isn't much left to do, folks. I mean, there's no more puzzle solving. There is, like, one final puzzle that's actually very, very interesting. And unfortunately, there is a death animation that goes with it, but it's very lackluster. Not as, you know, not as exciting as the whole, you know, getting eaten alive by roaches or whatnot. And that was very upsetting. So I won't show you the final death in the game. And I'll actually talk about it once it happens, but other than that, sorry. And, right, so he sent me to the basement. As, as if you've noticed, the carnivorous uh, brooches are now gone. All there is left is this gaping hole. Climb down hole. What the hell? Whoa! Um, look at stump. This was it. I was certain. The remains of the tree that Boyle and his father cut down, its wood being later used to construct an inn, a harpsichord, a shipping crate, and an idol. I could feel that some scrabbling in my mind that I had felt just before all my other victims. Before all my vi visions. God. This time, it was from the stump itself that seemed to be beckoning me closer. God. Touch. Stump. Whoa! Clanbro in Peninsula, July 28th, 55 B.C. Cabadeth, a Celtic druid, awaited the return of his friend and colleague Galadin, who brings news of the invasion of Angelsley by the Roman Sudanist Polish. God. <laughs> Having fallen out of favor with his fellows for certain radical beliefs and activities, Cabadeth lives in solitude in his remote forest clearing and prefers not to travel himself. Cabadeth! Galadin, you bring news. The foreigners have landed. They could not be deterred by our sorcery. All this lost, oh? Certain are you. Thus, they are making their way across the land, eliminating resistance. Even you out here will be brought down within days. I'm sorry, Cabadeth. And the great druids of Anglis leap plow so easily to the brash foreign power? Do not hang your head yet, my friend. Perhaps the activities for which I was ostracized could spell an answer. What are you talking about? Do you know my dealings with the Ethereal Realm? I know what you claim. There exists some otherly territory populated by demons and creatures of magic. And that you, Cabadeth, can somehow commune with these creatures. Come inside and I shall explain. Whoa! Cabadeth, what is this madness? In my dealings with Ethereal Realm, I have learned of many powerful demons and elements. But there is one spoken of, re only reluctantly, a beast possessing an awesome power. Of awesome power. You plan to summon a demon? The most terrible of them all, who strikes fear in even the most unflappable creatures I have spoken with. His name is Uva Bol. A pain elemental, indeed. The only pain elemental ruler of a desolate wasteland were non-venture. Invulnerable, highly potent beast that feeds on the agony of others. And today is his day. The day when the boundaries between the realms weaken and the glimpses our world. To bring him through that point should be simple. Even if you could conjure such a thing, how would you have it defend our land? I have much knowledge in the ways of magic. With the correct bindings, any demon can be forced to my will. I completed the preparations while I waited for your turn. All that remains is the summoning. Cabadeth, it pains me to see you build such hopes on such nonsense. Be silent and watch! You shall see your nonsense soon enough. In this hall of death, and by the light of Bellinus' gift, I summon you. I bring you gifts to mark your path. 
I feed you with pain. I call you with madness. I summon you with the greatest loss. And I bind by you by your true name. Chizo! By the gods! I have reached out to you through the void, Chizo! I command you by your true name! Show yourself! Cabinet, please, stop this! SHOW YOURSELF! Holy fuck, Chizo, you're awesome! My Tetris, it's huge! It's, it's larger than I anticipated. But Chizo must obey the rules of magic. It is bound, I can command it! Or it can be tentacle raped. Oh, no! It is far more powerful than I thought! Galden, help me! Forgive me, Kepideth. No! Galden, I beg you! Don't let it take me alive! Chizo, of course, had no use for meat. It feeds on pain. It does not kill its prisoners. Kabadev's agony was a particularly rare morsel, and Chizo inserted it would last. His soul was placed inside an oak sapling on the site of his old home to grant his body immortality. For five centuries, as the tree grew, he knew torment beyond even his most depraved images. But then, his body was warped, and his mind long fallen to solace in his dementia. He was Chizo's utterly and completely his slave. Trilby! Silvan! You were supposed to leave! I couldn't. I, I just... A bed. The professor, he's, he's, he's dead. I know. He was killed by the shadows. Just like they'll kill, kill you if you don't get away from here. What is this place? The cave is the center of the rowdy shift. The stump is what's causing it all. How? It's the vessel for the soul of the tall man. The occult of Chizo. Linkman! Nice to see a friendly face. Amazing, isn't it? Out of all the things Sir Roderick could have used to murder his son, he chose that idol. Placing the soul of John Defoe into the wood alongside Cabadeth's. Infusing the poor retard with Chizo's magic, allowing him to come back indefinitely more powerful than before. Certainly pretty lucky. Lucky? Chizo had to wait 2,000 years for that opportunity. The opportunity to blend magic and science in a single entity. The opportunity to create the bridge. What are you talking about? The bridge between the realms. Over which Chizo will cross into our universe and purify mankind. Our order has waited 200 years for that prophecy to be fulfilled. You're not with the Ministry of Occultism. Well, no shit, Trilby. Who are you? 200 years ago, the prophet Jack Freehorn founded the Order of Blessed Agonies. 200 years since then, we have grown and watched and waited. It was only in the recent years that the events foretold in the Book of Chizo bad began to occur. It mentioned John Defoe. And it mentioned you. Me? You were the one prophesied to guide the bridgekeeper to his destiny. But you didn't finish the job! All three aspects of John Defoe had to be destroyed to create the bridge. Body, mind, and soul. You only destroyed his body, and his soul rem and his mind remained. Had I known about this, I wouldn't even, even have done that. That will truly disappoint my superiors. They were quite adamant that I should try to persuade you to join our cause and fulfill your foretold duty. Is that why you were helping me? They thought if I guided you through visions and showed you the appropriate passages from our holy books, you'd understand that prophecy is real. You honestly believe I joined some insane cult because you handed me some leaflets? Personally, no. A knife in my gut brought an explosion of icy cold agony. I heard the pitter patter of my blood on the rocky floor. The pain, the surprise, and my exhaustion went together to cause immediate unconsciousness. I awoke to find myself slayed upon the stump, blood still slowly leaking from my wound. In my injured state, I could barely move. My limbs refused to respond, and I was as weak as a newborn. 
Link, man! Oh, good, you're awake. I was afraid you missed this. What? What are you doing? After you strategize in a superior and default manner, the Order needs to nudge things along. We need a connection to Tuzo to help administrate his coming. And today might be the only opportunity we have all year to summon the Tall Man, aka the Prince. You're going to bring that thing into our world? <coughs> With the scheduled rules to a bless agonies and unoffering? After he takes your life, he'll be grateful to us. And then he will guide us to our destiny. So, why did you stab me? What if I'm already dead by the time he gets here? He won't be. Men like you, Trill, be dying on their own terms. <laughs> they don't weakly let their lives slip away for one measly knife wound. Hush now. Capitan is coming. Um. Move. My attempts to move only made things worse. I felt a stab of pain and something snapped behind my eyes, filling my vision with spots. Uh. Talk to. See about. Are you there? She's here, but she can't answer you. <laughs> she has nothing to do with this Linkman. Let her go! Oh, on the contrary. It is important that all three of us be here. It's part of the ritual. What? I call thee, Kabadef, to the wood that is your soul. I call thee from the north. I was losing bed suddenly. My arms and legs were limp and unresponsive. I couldn't move. Call thee from the east! Yeah, folks, there really isn't much we can do here until, well, a certain time when we do something. The pain was now replaced with the ice cold numbness that was spreading fast. The room was swimming before my eyes. Actually, can I do it? Uh, die. Not yet, but I was pretty close. Yeah, can't die just yet. I call thee from the west! It was becoming harder and harder to breathe, as air rattled in and out of my lungs like a buzzsaw. Okay, I think we can actually do it now. Actually, before we stop, I'm going to have to stop it here, folks. There's no way how I'm going to get to the end of this on time, so, uh... Death. So I'll see you guys next time when we finally finish off Trilby's Notes. See you then.